fed via USB, and it had a bunch of old A's and you know plus one old A's available on it. So right now we are trying to look at how Wi-Fi could be used by worms as a propagation technique, as a propagation medium. Now, here is typically what happens. I'll just take five more minutes. Is nobody watching the clock? And I'll take ten. <laughs> I can't see that. <laughs> so, it's infected the first computer. I showed you it's possible to decrypt the passphrase. You can even do it programmatically. Right? Decryption. This is from Nageshwar, who's there. Nag, please say hi to everyone. He's the password tracker guy. Any, any password tracking tool is probably his, so yeah, great stuff. Uh, alternately, you can dump it. Once you go ahead and actually crack the passphrase, all you need to do is create a soft access point with the same name as the Office AP. Now, here is what happens. Uh, people familiar with wireless know that if your client is close to two access points, it will hop to the AP with higher signal strength, right? Now, which means if the worm-infected laptop, after decrypting the passphrase, creates an SSID with the same name as the Office AP and the same passphrase, and it gets close to the other laptop, which is, which is the most common place this can happen? Places, conference rooms, right? Cafeterias where people are sitting very close to each other. Airport. Airport, but then you may have to be the same group traveling together, right? In which case, I'm sure everybody's just sipping coffee, no one's working. <laughs> Once that happens, the worm, basically the authorized laptop would now connect to the worm infected laptop. Second part is whatever old days, one days, whatever you have, right? Even something like a little set attack with a Java applet. I'm not going to talk about that. I'll come to why this is interesting. Now, the worm propagates, infects the next laptop. That's a nasty looking worm. And what does it do now? Anyone? Okay. Was that? Was that? Sorry? Okay. But I want a worm. Okay, what's that? Very good. What is the society of the AP? <laughs> Office AP, right? This is what it does. Now, you have two of them, right? Which means they could lure a couple more. Like this is that whole worm propagation theory, like the little exponential graph which uh, AV vendors use, used to scare all the Right, clients, like, hey, worm propagates, we can't stop at exponential graph. So the more and more computers which are infected with this worm, the more signal power this localized worm net would actually have in comparison to the Office AP. Right? And this would just mean more and more computers would get infected fast. Now, here's a quick question. I've really run out of time over this, giving me that look. Like, you know, but quick question what is so unique about this? Why, in my mind, everything is vegan. Okay, but if you want to compare it with traditional worm propagation on the wired side, what is the clear cut advantage? It can't be directed. Why? Why it can't be directed? Office AP is enough to the office network, basically. Okay, fantastic. So, basically, is this one touching the wired side to propagate? Where are all your firewalls, IDSs, IPSs, AV evasion, right? On the wired side. Which means this worm is propagating entirely in wireless without touching the wired side. And this is what makes it so potent is two minutes? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, yes. This conference is yours. You can stop me, beat me up, throw me out, everything. Go ahead. <laughs> Yes, fantastic point which is, right, you could actually inject this as an APT where you target just a given network. And if you want to do an APT or an advanced persistent threat, 
in my mind what I will do is hard code the worm with the SSID of that network, right? Hopefully that should be a unique SSID. So uh, I wrote a piece of code, wanted to really demo it in a lot of places, but then I, I, I read this, which is like $250,000 to worm creator, right? Now quick question, how many of you would chase me right now for $250,000? Just one? No, but basically what I'm getting to is if they can do that for a previous one, they can do it for the next one as well. Anyone? What? <laughs> Rohit will be the first one to block that gate. <laughs> because Rohit was complaining about the conference and stuff, right? Or that the loss, then it won't be lossy anymore. <laughs>
Okay. And he's doing the same thing, like, as you said. The same uh, name and all that? Yeah, so we yeah. can uh, push it at work. Uh, I'm already push it. Okay. And you are giving me the business email. So will my team into action or will yours only? No, so basically when you have Windows 7 onwards, this is supported along with client mode, not with ad hoc mode. So if you're on ad hoc mode, the switch doesn't happen. Older version of Windows, you could just use ad hoc or client mode, you don't have AP mode. Second, if you have two networks with one AP mode, one ad hoc mode with the same SSID, the switching does not happen. The security configuration always needs to be same. Okay, and uh, the second question is basically... Uh, uh,
Where is my little parting gift? Where is my little parting gift and souvenir? Yeah. Oh. Welcome.